Before we get started tonight, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio. I want to introduce y'all, introduce to y'all to a couple of our sponsors. First, the Southern California Warriors semi-pro football team. The world of semi semi sports sport. I didn't get that right. The world of semi pro sports is unlike any other sports organizations. Players pay to play in, in hopes of so many different outcomes, whether it's playing to get film, do trial for professional teams, big time colleges, or just playing to stay in shape. No matter what, all semi pro players have one thing in common, and that's playing for the love of the game. The SoCal Warriors have been in quest to earn titles and give players second chances since 2017. Whether you're in Southern California or anywhere in the world, give semi-pro sports a chance if you love your sport. You may get that second chance you've been waiting for as an athlete. You can find on social media at Twitter at SoCal Warriors, on Instagram, Southern California Warriors, underscore Warriors, and Facebook, Southern California Warriors. I'm pretty sure the Warriors season about to kick off here pretty soon. Background Check International. Are you looking to background check a new hire on? Let Kit Freeman take care of that for you. Kit found it has managed Background Check International since 1994. And he's here to help you with the screening process. Contact Kit and let, him, and let him make the hiring process that much easier. This business is used for professional back, background checks and not for the use of any crimes such as identity theft or any other illegal activity. You can find it on social media at Facebook at Background Check International, BCI, or also on their website, BCINT.com. Now to the show. Well, with the March Madness here, with the NCAA tournament field set, we discuss everything going on in each bracket. Who's deserving to get in? Who is not deserving? And who's going to take all? The, who's going to take take all the way to the championship in New Orleans? Plus, with the Will Wade situation and LSU affect the Tigers and their March to quit in the quest to, uh, to win the title. Plus, was well, Marshall Shexy's last ride? Can he take his team out on top? We'll discuss that and much more here on Fast Break Live on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all our sports, and you're welcome to join us. And join us as you shout tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We got a lot to discuss tonight. Brackets dropped. Will Wade getting fired in the middle of the SEC tournament. A lot of things is developing here on app. D Lock, how you doing tonight, sir? I know you're very happy with the Tom Brady news. Yeah, you can read my mind on that one, man. Uh, that was great news. I feel, you know. Much much better, but uh, the only bad thing that 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 helped me out with knowing that Florida looked so damn bad in the in the damn uh, SEC tournament this past week, but a uh, weekend. But um, I'm doing good, man. Um, things are going well, and I'm looking. I'm definitely excited to see what what this bracket, how this bracket is going to play out. It's going to be real interesting how things play out, D Lock. It's going to be. Really good. I think one team just kind of initially looking at the bracket. Like, not one team really sticks out. I mean, I know Gonzaga got the number one overall overall seed and all that. But, you know, do they scare me to death? No. So, we'll, we'll dive into all that and all that good stuff. And just... Uh, going from there but ladies and gentlemen 
the NCAA tournament uh, brackets just dropped. Lots of good matchups. Lots of teams. That kind of surprises that got in. And some I was kind of surprised that didn't get in. So. And I'm trying to find a good bracket to read. Let's see. But D-Log, let me uh, ask you this. Is, do you see this, like, do you see, like, uh, like a level playing field in this tournament? Or do you see, like, the top teams kind of blow by everybody in your eyes? Um, I think it's going to be, I think it's a good, good matchups. Um, for me, um, it's a few intriguing match- matchups that I see. Uh, to be honest with you, me being... Uh, in uh, in Atlanta, Georgia State specifically, uh, they do have that rough matchup. Uh, first game of this first first tournament play against Gonzaga, uh, but I like I like I like how these matches look, man. Um, it's a few of them that really have me just you know kind of getting very interested and see what's going to play out with them. Uh, and my thing is, like, you got that, is that North Carolina and North Carolina Marquette matchup? Yeah, that's going to um, be a good one. Yeah, that's one right there that kind of just wakes up the tournament automatically. That's what I love about this tournament because, you know, we see in uh, NBA, you got a seven-game series. Hockey, seven-game series. Baseball, seven-game series. Uh, NFL is that one and done. But it's only – what now what six or seven teams that make the playoffs but the ncaa tournament for both men and women they have so many teams that make it that it's a one and done so that means that there's a higher chance that we do see that cinderella pick we do see these upsets um so even though you know and that's a great thing about filling out the bracket is you're looking at these teams he's like man this team will whoop the ass this team will whoop the ass this team will whoop the ass the next thing you know hell the first round of games, we see an upset. Yep. And it's like, damn, my, my, my bracket is already, already screwed. So that's one thing that I've definitely noticed. Um, and I expect the same thing to happen. Um, I expect the same thing to happen this year. And just going over some of the matchups is going to be very, you know, the one I said earlier, that's going to be one. Um, I do like that USC and Miami matchup. I think that's going to be one as well. Um, that many people are not probably going to be talking about, but it's going to be a, a, a matchup to watch for. Um, so it, 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 it's a few that uh, has caught my eye, um, and I'm definitely looking forward to. I mean, it's just very interesting uh, just to see how these teams um, get this situated. But these number one teams, you know, the Baylor, the Gonzaga, um, who else is number one? Is that Arizona um, and Kansas? Um, I think they deserve those number one spots. Uh, but now, uh, clearly, you can deserve. But now, everybody's looking at you. The eyes are on you. Uh, so I would expect uh, some close games with those number one seeds. I don't think it'll be an easy blowout for uh, blowout for them. <clears throat> I think just kind of like initially thinking about the bracket and stuff like that. And Taryn, uh, I'll get to your question here in a second. That, that's a very that's a thing that. I always kind of grinding my gears about that, but I we'll get to that this second. Initially, you know, there's a lot of good matchups. There's a lot of you know intriguing matchups. I think, I've, as we've seen in college basketball, there's been more of a balance for the past few years in terms of coaches. Now, all they're trying to fight the big schools, but they're going to do these, these like lesser conferences, quote unquote, and still do their thing and still get high quality players. Say, for example, Shaka Smart leaving Texas, going to Marquette, and Marquette being that you know that Milwaukee area and whatnot, still a great, still a big city, big population. You still recruit well, especially in that Chicago area, and whatnot. You still do do some things up there. You know, Creighton, for example. I used to live out there. Omaha. 
population about 400,000. A lot of talented guys that come through there. And, you know, and talent in Iowa and whatnot, Mizzou, and all that stuff. They're going to cause headaches and stuff like that in their matchups. So I just think it's like a balance all over. Like, not one team sticks out more than ever. Sure, you got, like, different teams with different styles. But, you know, not one by is going to, like, keep me up at night, in a sense. I think that's what makes this so great. It's like, you know, you don't know who's going to come out in this whole deal. But Terry brought a good question up, D-Lock. And let me uh, bring this to you. You know how the conference champions get an automatic bid and the conference tournament uh, winners get an automatic bid. Do you think they should just get I'll take the back. I'm sorry. I'm, I read that question while Terry. I'm sorry. But he thinks, do you think uh, that team, that t- uh, do you think teams should get automatic qualifiers for, for winning the regular season title as well or just the tournament? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, now, is he saying that teams that win the com- their conference? Yeah, if they win the regular season conference title, they should get automatic bid. Um, to be honest with you, I I don't think so. And the reason why is because uh, look at college football now, right? You know, you got people that are deciding who goes to the playoffs, right? Yep. Now, granted, we are talking about four teams. But what happens is these teams are winning their conference, you know, t- titles, you know, which conference might not be super huge. They might, their schedule might not be as, as good as, as the SEC or, or other conferences. But since they win their conference title, these teams are, like, considered to be in that top four as one of the better teams. Um, and I don't, I feel like that's not the case. I mean, it, we just seen Cincinnati have a hell of a season. And they get their ass kicked in the in the, in the playoffs. So, um, now granted, you're talking about four teams. You're talking about you know a schedule of twelve games compared to basketball, where there's a lot more you know games. But uh, for me, I don't think that should be the case. I think more so is the it's the games that they win throughout the season that I think that should weigh the most, not winning their conference. Um, because prime example. I go back to it. Georgia State, I believe, won their conference, correct? They just won uh, their conference and looked very good at the Sun Belt, you know, beat Georgia Southern and the other teams. And the number one team they're, they're going to play is Gonzaga. So, um, yes, I think that, you know, if you do that, I feel like that's going to – I don't feel like it should happen. Um, but this is going to be something that a lot of, you know, a lot of teams, a lot of coaches are going to want. But seeing what happened in college football, I'm pretty sure some teams are probably going to disagree. <clears throat> I think for me, uh, the regular season title, I don't know. It's just kind of... I guess it's just like a precursor to get you, I guess, an easier path to win your conference tournament. I don't know. Should they get almighty bid if they bring a regular season title? I mean, in one sense, if they win, if one sense, especially in the big boys, if they win a regular season title, I mean, they pretty much a shoe in for the tournament because they'll probably get it as an out, at large bid. Because, hell, look at Auburn, for example. They won a regular season title and they got knocked out in the uh, ACC tournament, and then, you know, they still get like a second seed. So. I mean, if you rigor, if you win your regular season title, I think you get in to wrap this up, and then, and you know, it just gets you to the easy path of the uh, conference tournament and win that part as well, which is kind of like the main goal. Yeah, um, and I and I think I kind of understand that part. It's just for me. Um, I'm just looking at, like, these teams, you know, their goal is to win conference, and they do. Then they just feel like they're just, well, we're supposed to be in the, 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 the you know, in, in, in the tournament. I don't think that 
should be the case. Uh, but, I mean, we'll see because, again, we are talking about one of the greatest tournaments, uh, playoff tournaments uh, in sports history, right? We've seen a lot. we see more upsets in the NCAA tournament than I believe in any sport. So, again, to, you know, to that point, you know, I guess that kind of makes sense that where if you do when you deserve a bid, but um, – and it may make it a lot more interesting, but um, I just, like I said, for me, um, maybe I'm, I'm thinking more so of how these, how college football is. Uh, but I, I, I think that you know you put this schedule together, um, and then you do, you know, when because you put the, if you do right in your schedule, you're going with your conference more than likely. Yeah. So uh, for me, I, I feel like if you put the schedule together, you're already going to put down the fact that you should be uh, in the tournament. Um, and I, we're not talking about the Kansas, the Kentucky, the Arizona. Uh, that those teams are going to do what they're supposed to do for the most part. So, uh, but again, um, it's something that a lot of a lot of um, a lot of teams probably would really consider. But also, you got the 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 the, the heavy the heavy loaded conferences like the SEC, like the ACC, who may disagree with that. So, uh, but again. Um, that's a good question, and we may see we may see it for years, you know, coming up because we've seen different changes in different formats for different sports change and evolve. So we may see it for college college uh, college basketball, but the tournament is is incredible to watch all the time because we'll li- literally see a number one seed go down to the wire with a number fifteen seed or number fourteen seed, um, and that catches everybody's attention. So yeah, we'll we'll put a bow on that and probably come around to that later on. But D Lock, let's get to these brackets uh, real quick. Let's start off in the West with the top overall seed Gonzaga. They start off uh, with a matchup against Georgia State, the school you work for currently. I seen you know what you think about that matchup real quick on that. Well, to be honest with you, we know what um, Gonzaga brings to the table. Um, but the thing is, to be honest with you, Georgia State is not a team to sleep on. They got a couple guys on the team that's pretty solid, um, and that can that can really uh, do some damage overall. Now, granted, they do have that matchup <laughs> that I'm pretty sure any any team did not want. Um, but they got a couple guys. Corey Allen is one of the guys that's probably a stud that makes – a big difference. He's a, he's a big time scorer for Georgia State, um, and they they got some bigs. But this matchup should be pretty easy for Gonzaga, um, but Georgia State is not going to make it easy. Um, so for me, uh, I think Gonzaga takes it. But um, you know, again, you know, this could be one of them games where hell, you know how it is in the NCAA tournament. A, a team can catch momentum, and they just start kicking everybody ass one by one. So, and it doesn't have to be just a number one. It could be a number, you know, 15, 14 different ranked teams. And that's when we start seeing those star players, you know, evolve or come out of nowhere or we haven't talked about. So, on the last player I remember out of Georgia State uh, was R.J. Hunter. And you remember, he made his move. He was this big – he was make, making a name for himself in the tournament. Yeah. So, um, again, um, and I believe, was it Boston that drafted him? I believe it was Boston, the Boston Celtics. Yeah, and but, he didn't do nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you go at Boston. I told you, the, the, at Boston, they play like hot potato with the, everybody can catch fire over there, and you don't know who the, the main guy is. So that's a you know a bad team for him to go to. But, you know, back to the topic, um, I think that uh, Gonzaga does win this game. But, again, um, and I say this basically for every match, don't sleep on the underdog, Georgia State, or, you know, any other team because um, – Again, this is a this is not a, a, a seven game or four game series or five game series. This is one and done. So, you know, Gonzaga has to bring their best game to, to solidify. You know, any team you don't want to go down to the wire with. It doesn't matter if they're ranked last or first. So, and I'm pretty sure Gonzaga will make sure that doesn't happen. I think Gonzaga will take this easily. I think. Look at the next game. Boise State, Memphis, that's going to be a real interesting one. Memphis kind of really found himself here later on in the season. You know, we talk about Penny, 
you know, possibly, you know, losing focus and whatnot. But I think, you know, when they get the conference play, you know, they kind of find themselves and whatnot and kind of get things rolling. You know, defensively, they start playing better. And I know they got some big names there, but they really, they really do much like they kind of hope with, you know, as they thought. But I think this matchup here is real interesting in my eyes. Like, can Penny find himself and get some momentum for this program? Or people will, call, will be kind of calling him, a, you know, a flash in the pan. Yeah, and, you know, like I said, Memphis has had, since Penny's been there, you know, he's brought a lot of attention there. So, um, hoping that he doesn't hasn't lost focus. This is going to be a big matchup um, early. So, I mean, we could see a Sweet 16, hell, even an Elite 8 out of this out of this group between Boise State and Memphis, to be honest with you. So, um, it's going to be interesting, but again, they're going to have to run into Gonzaga, you know, but as I said, you know, one and done's uh, there'll be times where we'll be having a, we'll be having a show. Where we'll, you know, we'll have a show between games or before game after, and we'll see a game literally be close to an upset. It's going to happen. Like that's, that's just going to be what that is. So hopefully for you, it's not Alabama, you know, um, and other, you know, clearly other fans, we don't want it to be their team as well. But um, I'm I'm definitely excited to see that matchup. And the next set of games, you got UConn, New Mexico State, and then you got Arkansas, Vermont, which that could be a trap game for Arkansas if they don't watch themselves. Looking at that uh, part of the bracket, it kind of screams Arkansas to come out to go to the Sweet Sixteen. What you think about that? I definitely think that it's a possibility. Um, now, you know, when you have Vermont, uh, you should definitely have a. I think they run into UConn. UConn could cause some issues for them, uh, but they have it mapped out for them. You know, and they they're in a great spot. Uh, you know, obviously Vermont does have that. You know, that twenty eight and five record. Um, so they are a team to watch for Arkansas. Arkansas should be fine. I, I, I don't see them having issues uh, getting to a Sweet 16 um, and possibly going against uh, Gonzaga. Uh, it's like I already got Gonzaga. You get, I don't know if y'all been hearing it later, but y'all see I, I've already penciled Gonzaga to get them to, to the to the, to the, to the final to the final already, picking them over Georgia State to getting them past Memphis and Boise and then battling with UConn or, or Arkansas. So, um, but I definitely see Arkansas making that making that trip to Sweet Sixteen. Then the next set of games, you got Alabama as the sixth seed to play either Rutgers or Notre Dame in their playing game, and then you got Texas Tech, Montana State. Shout out to Adam Carter in the chat. He's saying, "How did Rutgers qualify for the tournament?" I'll say this, Adam. That Big Ten is tough. I got I question another team in the Big Ten that got in. We'll get to that pink team here in a little bit. I don't know for Rutgers for me, D Lock. I don't, I don't know. I think this got they get, this got some quality wins, some tough quality wins. They're a tough team, and I think they place in here cor- correctly because. They're not a lot as a at large bid. I think they got to earn itself in, uh, but I think they're in the right. They're in the right matchup going against Maryland. Yeah, um, you know that that matchup um, is going to be, you know, one hell of a one hell of a, a matchup. And my thing is, you know what Maryland uh, can bring to the table. So no, uh, Notre Dame. Uh, 
Notre Dame. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, so it, it like it's gonna be something uh, that many uh, people can definitely uh, stay tuned in. And like I said, each each game is gonna be very interesting and gonna go down to the wire because it's one and done. We seen it in the NFL playoffs. Like you probably seen the first round where teams were kind of you know beating team by maybe ten or seven or 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 thirteen. But then the next round came around when it got really tough. Now it's like, okay, each possession counts. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that matchup as well. I think for me, this this part, <sighs> Texas Tech is going to be a tough team to beat. In my eyes, they were real tough to beat. Alabama. Oh, Alabama. <sighs> they have to... They like, if they want to go far... They they have to have to find an identity, which I don't think that's going to happen this late in the season. Nate O's got... Here's my thing. Nate O's has to figure out how he want to craft his team. Now, what I mean by that... Do you want af- long, athletic guys that can play ball or whatnot? Or do you want shooters in your system or and whatnot? Guys can handle the ball and just shoot. Because he has too much of a mix of athletic playmakers and shooters, and he don't know what to do with them. And it's kind of like the theme of the season. With days clicking in cylinders, all that stuff, one of the top teams that uh, you don't want to play against. But things ain't figured out, and whatnot, and especially defensively. You don't know which way they're gonna go. I think when we saw from last year, you know, from the senior crew of Herb Jones, Petty, and Alex Reese. You had like each each guy had an identity. With these group of guys here, yeah, some names are recognizable of Jerome Crowley, Stockelford, and whatnot, but they don't have an identity. And I think I probably could win one game against either Rutgers or Notre Dame, but that Texas Tech matchup is going to be like a hard beat. And we'll see what happens. I I hate to say it, but I got Texas Tech coming out this little part right here. They got Texas Tech. Yeah, going to the, so far. Look at look at how this little section part plays out. Texas Tech coming out that area. Because, like I said, uh, yeah, Al- Alabama. If they clicking all cylinders, D Lock, tough team to beat. But yeah, I think one thing is going to be hiccup for them defensively. Herb Jones, we see him in the NBA, young, bright defensive player. You know, losing John Petty, that senior leadership, tough as nails. You look at this year's squad; they really don't got that. So, right. I, I got Texas Tech coming out of this, this area here. And my la- thing is, it, it, it goes with what, you, what we talked about or what we said. Like I said, um, it's about getting the ball rolling. So, um, if Bama can get rolling against a Notre Dame or a Rutgers, because for one, you know, between Notre Dame and Rutgers, they're gonna they're gonna have that momentum on themselves because they gotta play each other. So, one of these teams, whoever comes out. They're going to be ready to go against Bama. If Bama could come out and be ready to compete, um, I think that they, they're they going to bring it against Texas Tech. I, mean, I think that's going to, like I said, I, I do see them two meeting up. Um, but I think it's going to be closer than what you're thinking right now. But I think, I'm thinking right now that Bama gets that 
okay, my, my Montana State is 27-7. They're going to be a pretty decent team. But Texas State probably should blow them out. Yes. So, that I, I don't know if they're going to keep that chemistry or they're going to have to work through that chemistry with that game. Now, Notre Dame and the Rutgers, I see that being a better matchup for Bama, a, a, a more competitive matchup for Bama. And if it is, now – the, the, the hole that you're talking about that they need to fill, the thing that they got to work on, I think they try to fix that with Notre Dame or R- Rutgers. And what happens is it prepares them better for Texas Tech, in my opinion. But uh, clearly Texas Tech shows that they're the better team right now. But like I said, you just never know. And to wrap up in this side of the bracket, Michigan State, Davidson, that's going to be a good one right there. And Duke, Kyle State forward in. We talked about on an episode not too long ago, D-Lock, about Monchessi's last ride. He got an old foe in this side of the bracket with uh, Tom Izzo. Can you see Monchessi and crew making a run in the tournament with the, with the defense not playing up to snuff right now? I believe so. I mean, I, the last season and all this stuff, they're gonna they're gonna come with it. Um, now that matchup, hell, that'd be bad for him to take his uh, his final loss against <laughs> Michigan State is over. But it is possible, and I think they're gonna have to treat that game like it's a national championship game. Because at the end of the day, I mean, if we look at this bracket, right? You're talking about Michigan State, Texas Tech, Bama. Um, and clearly Gonzaga, Arkansas. To be honest with you, to get out of this bracket, I think you're going to have to face Gonzaga. But to even get to that opportunity to play on a, to play them, you're going to have to face either Texas Tech or Bama. So to get to that, your biggest matchup is going to be Michigan State. So you're going to have to treat that as if it's a national t- title game. And once they do that, um, I think they I think they play for Coach K. Be honest with you, I think Duke gets to the Elite Eight. Okay. That's fair. I just I just like I mean you know what it feels like to have like your coach is saying this is my last year. <laughs> like you're gonna feel some type of way and you're gonna play different. So that's what I'd expect. The fun matchup would be Mission State and Duke. But Davidson has been really, really good this year. Really, really good. And I'm not saying they can play spoiler spoiler on that, but I think Davidson will get Michigan State a run. And Michigan State, I mean, they've been solid this year, but not spectacular. And don't be surprised if Davidson beats Michigan State there. So... Y'all feeling in your brackets. Don't be surprised if, if Davidson beats Michigan State. To me, for Duke, I think the defense has to be a little bit better. I think they got all the offensive ability in the world to kind of to win the championship. But if the defense ain't snuff to you know to carry them, then you know what are we doing here? And like you mentioned. I think they will try to go out for Coach K. I think they'll go play for their damage to play for that man. And who knows? I, I think they might get to the Final Four. They may have to beat Gonzaga to get there. But if the defense ain't the stump D-Lock, and then, then you, they can kiss Coach K's title hopes of goodbye. Yeah. Um, and like I said, they... I just, I'm thinking about the fact that they're going to play hard for this guy. So, and that is expected. Um, so, for me, uh, that's just what I think this team is going to do. And if they do, then um, they can get, they can go pretty far. Um, but Davidson is a team to watch out for as well. Um, I think they're a sleeper team. Not necessarily a sleeper team, but it's just that, you know, I think, a lot of fans, I think, want to see a Duke 
in Michigan State. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just like what somebody, what pretty sure many fans and the media wants to see. So, uh, so that means you know not many are talking about a Davidson, but they could mess up that whole story uh, big time if they you know do what they're supposed to do. Or if they play well and they come ready to play. Going to the east side of things, you got Baylor as the number one seed on that side. They take on North North Fork State, which I think there should be a cakewalk there. The big t- big matchup in this side of the bracket, North Carolina Marquette. Yeah, boy, that one right there. Ooh. If if you feeling at a bracket, that's one you kind of kind of skip and come back to. Dude, that's one that's one that you take a couple glasses of wine and you wait like 15, 20 minutes and then you go back and pick that game. <laughs> yep. Because you can't pick that game. You can't just sit if you sit there and try to figure that game out, you're gonna have a headache. So at this point, you know, hey, just sit back and get your glass of Merlot or something like that. Or drink some water or something like that and just sit back and think because this game is gonna be one that many that can go either way. But me, honestly, I think the better team has been playing well this year. Give me Marquette in that matchup, in my eyes. Uh, I don't because North Carolina has kind of struggled with some teams that shouldn't have struggled with this year. So I give me Marquette in that matchup. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, for me, I'm probably taking. The biggest thing for me is I'm looking at what teams come to play in the tournament. Um, so I'm expecting them to come to play, uh, North Carolina. But to your point, uh, and this goes back to what we remember the question earlier uh, about, you know, if a team wins their conference, should they have an automatic big? And I said, well, hell no, because what you do in your schedule should determine, you know, where you should be at and if you should go. And for me to believe that, like you said, to your point, North Carolina has been inconsistent this year. They've been playing close games to teams that they should not have played with close to. So for me, Marquette could just take this one. But I'm still riding with North Carolina, though. And my, in my bracket, I'm going to have them. Next part, St. Mary's. They play, in the, uh, they play the winner of the uh, playing game of Wyoming and Indiana. And then you got UCLA and Akron. St. Mary's a tough team. But Indiana has been playing pretty well on his last past three weeks. Now, I think they love playing for Mike Woodson. And if you get that Indiana St. Mary's matchup, they get St. Mary's got some nice bigs that can play. That's going to be a tough one. It's gonna be a tough one. Give me, uh. yeah, that's gonna be about between Wyoming and uh, Indiana. Oh no, no, I got Indiana winning that game. I'm talking about uh, Indiana, yeah. Indiana St. Mary's. I have to ride with uh, St. Mary's though over Indiana. Yeah, St. Mary's been cooking this year. I definitely think. I think I I like St. I like St. Mary's to give Baylor a good push as well. Um, hell out, boy. Them and UCLA gonna be them and UCLA matchup. That's gonna be a tough one, tough one as well. But I think St. Mary is a team that, again, one of the teams that's not necessarily number one or top four. So they're the team at the fifth spot that nobody's talking about that can do a lot of damage. So it doesn't matter whether it's Wyoming, Indiana. I think St. Mary will beat them, and then they'll be ready for UCLA. I don't know. With UCLA for me, you know, Johnny uh, Juzang and Jamie Jozek, you know, back from that Final Four team, I think they could make a good run. You have that, you know, that continuity from last year back in the fold. 
which is a good thing to have and which you really don't get sometimes in college basketball in this day and age. So I think that's a kind of like a positive on that front that could take UCLA on a ride again like last year. Now, can they get by like a St. Mary's? I, I don't know. Maybe. But I think that experience counts. So I see UCLA coming out this bracket. It's going to be a fight, though, with St. Mary's. But I see them coming out, you know, getting to that Sweet 16. And possibly making a nice run with it. Yeah, it could. I just uh, it's and the thing is, UCLA they had a, they had the they're one of the teams with high expectations. So for me, I'm looking at okay, well, hell, which one of these teams with high expectations like Gonzaga, uh, UCLA, Baylor, um, which one of these teams? are going to fail that expectation. Because it's going to be somebody. Very high expectation. Not everybody can get to the championship. So, um, somebody's got to do it. Hopefully not UCLA, but St. Mary's is going to give them a run for their money. And to finish on this side of the bracket for the East, you got Texas versus Virginia Tech. You got Purdue, Yale, Murray State versus San Francisco, and Kentucky and St. Peter's. Virginia Tech was a bubble team that got in over Texas A&M, which I do, still don't understand that, D-Log, as we're sitting here at, in my time, 7.43 p.m. on 3-13-2022. I still don't understand how <laughs> Texas A&M did not get in compared to a, um, ooh, we didn't get to that team yet. I'll get to them. I'll say my beef for a little bit, but. Virginia Tech, one of those bubble teams that got in. You got Texas, who kind of, kind of hit a little skid there. Purdue and well. I got that matchup. Murray State, San Francisco. Murray State's been playing pretty well all, all year. And you got Kentucky. I kind of said this in the past, D-Lock. If Kentucky's healthy and good to go, they can go far. They, they can go far and win a championship. But that's ifs and buts. I'm going to still ride true to that. I got Kentucky at least going to the Elite Eight D-Lock. D- really? If they're healthy and they're clicking on all cylinders, I, like I said, I'm not a big John Calipari fan. There was. I think he's a snake oil, oil, man, oil man. He a weasel. But I can recognize real. And he got a good squad. I think they can make a good run to the Elite Eight out of this bunch here. I think the only hiccup you could, they could possibly get to is Purdue. Yeah, Purdue is going to give them problems. Um, let me see. If I had to really... I think Purdue is a, a team to watch out for. Um... And, J- and Jay and Ivy might get them a, get might get a run and take them all the way for yeah. Purdue. Purdue and they look they've been looking pretty good all year. So I I, I definitely agree with you there. The finish out of uh, let's go to the south real quick. Got Arizona top over on C that on that bracket. They play as a winner either uh uh Wright State and I don't know who the other team I can't read it at the moment. But no matter, I think Arizona's gonna win. Then you got Seton Hall, TCU, Houston, UAB, which is gonna be a good one. Illinois, Chattanooga. On that on that side right there, D-Lock. For me, UAB, Houston, I think that's one matchup. You, we all talk about the 5-12 seed right there. Yeah. I think UAB got a good chance to be that next one to be the fifth seed. 
UAB's been playing well. Adam Kennedy back at home right. in Birmingham. I had those boys playing very well. We know Adam Kennedy's a good coach. He's just dumb. He just do dumb stuff or say dumb stuff and get himself fired. So don't be surprised, ladies and gentlemen, if UAB beats Houston. Not saying Houston gonna be, just let them, you know, walk over them, but don't be surprised if UAB beats the Houston. I think it's interesting here. You know, how far do you, you Illinois go? Very true. I mean, Illinois right now that that matchup with Chattanooga is gonna. Know, be one that I think they should win, but to your point, that Houston matchup possibly a Seton Hall or TCU in Arizona. That bracket alone um, is going to bring problems. Now we know what Arizona can bring to the table, um, but me, to be honest, I'm interested to see what happens with the Seton Hall and TCU game. Yes, I think one of these teams. Yes, I think one of these teams are going to bring it. Um, and they could be that, that Cinderella story team. Um, I granted, like I said, number one's always known as the big the big teams, ex- high expectations. But some of these teams, man, like TCU and Seton Hall, like, they ain't no pushover. I think TCU, Jamie Dixon has done a good job with TCU. I think, you know, he was at these, these high profile jobs the past few years. Kind of went to TCU and kind of really found himself there. You know, don't have a lot of expectations, but he come in to do his job. In the past, you know, couple weeks, they haven't got big wins. The one against Texas Tech, you know, Texas. They had got some quality wins there down the stretch that, okay, you really can't take this team lightly. And I think that Seton Hall matchup is going to be a real good one there. In a lot of his eyes, that's the one you gotta come back to and really think about, and you fill up your bracket. To finish out this bracket, Colorado State, Michigan. Ooh, I'm gonna say my venom there. Tennessee, Longwood, Ohio State, Loyola, Chicago, and Villanova, Delaware. Who you see coming out this bunch? D Lock. It, it, a lot of intriguing qualities right here. And it's part of the bracket. Or now you talk about the part of the this is this bracket to be honest, probably just one of the tougher ones that I have to uh go through because you have um Villanova, Tennessee, Michigan, even though they're ranked you know, at the bottom, they still can do something. Um oh. I know, but it's I guess for me, I'm still having that. I, I'm looking at some of these teams. I'm just like expecting a big difference when they, the tournament comes around, which may not happen. But, you know, some of these teams come to play. Coaching is very important when it comes to these tournaments as well. Um, but to be honest, out of that small bracket, dude, I, I don't know if anybody. Uh, beats Villanova. I mean, they're they're hitting on all cylinders. Another team too. Now I think it's going to come down to honestly, I think it's going to come down to Tennessee and Villanova. Those two teams are going to are, are are you know going to have their matches with Longwood and then Delaware. I think Tennessee gets past Michigan. Um. I think Villanova gets past Ohio State uh, pretty much pretty easy. So for me, um, I like Tennessee and Villanova to do good out to come out that bracket, but Villanova will prevail. I'll make this quick. Michigan to Michigan is was too damn up and down for me all year. They had so many high expectations, and they just went to bed. And then Jawan Howard gets suspended. And then they go to the Big Twelve, Big Ten tournament and lay an egg against, you know, Indiana. 
They're not. I'm sorry. They're not a tournament team to me. And I think the only reason why the committee puts them put them in there and put my Tim Foyo Koofy hat on, they gotta sell tickets at these arenas. That's the only thing I really could think of. Because they lost revenue from 2020 when they canceled everything. 2021, they got some money, but they ain't let a lot of people in. 2022, the floodgate's going to be open. And I think they need a recognizable name to kind of sell tickets. And it's a damn shame that Texas A&M, who's been playing great ball, way better than damn Michigan has the past month or so, and especially in conference tournament-wise, that they didn't get in the damn tournament. That's a damn shame for Texas A&M and Buzz Williams down there that they didn't get in the tournament. Got, got all the way to the conference tournament final. Granted, they lost to Tennessee, and they didn't get in, but uh, damn Michigan did. And I tie, and one thing, D-Lop, I like to speak, I tie these all these herbs they do these brackets, all these things, saying that, you know, Michigan, you know, the first part of the season, blah, 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 blah. I don't care about that. That Joe Lenardi crowd, I, I, I'll get two shits about that. Excuse me for my language. I don't care what you did at the beginning, at the beginning of the season. It's kind of like what you're doing up to this point. And Michigan, at this point, is not a tournament team. They're not. There's other teams I could throw in there, but I think Texas A&M was kind of the biggest atrocity out there in my eyes. You know, that you, I think you probably agree yeah. with this. You, you, they trying to you trying to value these conference tournaments and all that stuff. You trying to value conference play and all that BS. Reward a better team that did their job, which was Texas A&M. And like you said earlier, um, how in the hell do you take them not make the turn? Yes. You know, like we 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 see what they what they've done. Um, and my thing is, like, when you have uh, a Michigan, like you said, who gets in, uh, it makes you question. So, but these these type of things, what happens is when things like this happen. Um, now this makes you know, them question well how do we make it fair to uh, these teams that deserve that opportunity to be in a tournament because they feel as if well hell you know what and them had a hell of a had a hell of a season a hell of an NCAA I mean SEC uh, tournament as well I mean come on now they went beat Arkansas bro yes I mean like they were on the you know and Auburn like they were they, that tournament of and that tournament alone, that should let you, this could have been your Cinderella. Yep. Like, come on, dude. Like, the stuff that they did, you know, for one, what they did to Florida, you know, I did not like, so I kind of pissed me off for a minute. But then you go beat a, a Auburn team, you know, in a, in a nail biter, and you come back, you beat a, a, a Arkansas. Like, that tells you, you know, what – this team can do it. This is what I mean by one shot, one kill type, one option, one one chance. All it takes, one chance to get it done. If you win on the right day, you're getting a team that has great chemistry right now. Even with a loss to Tennessee, their chemistry is fine. It's clicking on all cylinders when it needs to. This is and I and I'll share this quickly as an athlete myself and track athlete. So. You have a long season to track the field, right? In the beginning of the season, we see a lot of people run fast early in January. Indoor season starts in January, NCAA is in March. We see a lot of guys run fast in January. I'm talking about very fast. I'm talking about NCAA leaders, world top, fast times. Well, when March comes around, some of them don't run the same time they did in January. Mm. So when you click at the right time, because you have guys that may, may not run the fastest time in January or February, but they might start, you know, 
getting the race down right on time. They might start getting healthy at the right time. They may start lifting how they like, – like I said, getting the weight when like they're supposed to, getting the technique down. And when March comes around, when NCAA championships comes around, because in a race in the 100 or the 60 or any race, you only have one chance. So when that one time comes around and you get in the final, it doesn't matter what the person did before. It's about what they do when the gun goes off that race. And it's the same thing when it comes to the tournament. So a and may have started out kind of rough, may have had a couple games that they struggled with. But in the SEC tournament, they came to play. So imagine what happens when they face and get in a tournament where the comp- competition may not be as rough as it was in the SEC. You're not seeing a top five team every round. So, again, this is what a lot of t- a lot of teams and NCAA uh, teams, NCAA coaches would love to see with their teams is just an opportunity to play and get a chance to win. Now, that doesn't mean you take a team at the bottom of the conference and just throw them in to give them a chance. No, hell no, we're not saying that. But you give a you give a team a chance to go get that win, especially or get start to get the chemistry because, dude, like they came back from being two top top teams and they come back to lose to Tennessee. Okay, they're bothered by that loss to Tennessee, but the two wins was probably what really opened their eyes. Yep. And when that happens, you're going into the comp the tournament confident. So you go in there, you get that late spot. Okay, you face a top ten, top to say top five team. You just beat two of them. <laughs> so they're not threatened by that. So, yes. I mean, it, it it's, a, it's a shocking thing. And like I said, at some point, man, some of these, these coaches, NCAA, the committees, they're going to start trying to figure out a way how to make it fair. Because not only do you see that, not only do I, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of fans, especially like an A&M, you know, they fans and that committee, they're going to have a lot to say about this. And over time, we may see a different way of getting into that bracket. And let's wrap it up, D-Log. I know we're kind of low on time. There's so much to talk about in these games and whatnot. Hey, when you're talking about Will Wade's ass getting fired in the middle of the SEC tournament. Real quick, the Midwest bracket. You had a one, two C, Auburn, Kansas, and then a sneaky team like Terry Rodriguez brought up, USC. For me, in this bracket, real quick, D Lock. If Auburn's guard play can show up to play and play well, I think that can go a long way for him. I think Jarari Smith is the number one overall pick in this upcoming draft. I think he's that dude. But if the guard play for Auburn ain't there, like it has been the past couple, couple few games, then you Auburn can kiss their championship hopes goodbye. And Kansas, I think if they just play good ball, I think they'd be okay. USC is kind of like a sneaky team for me. And any infield getting kind of like that stamp of approval for the contract extension, I think that'll go a long way for them as well. What do you think about that? I think I, I, I totally agree. Um, I think Auburn does come to play. My thing is, you know, Jari Smith, he's going to he's gonna show why he deserves to be a top pick. Um, but it's going it, to, it, like, right now, I think the toughest competition to me, and that's what I'm really looking at. Like, I think Auburn's going to get there, but I think the top, toughest competition is probably going to be uh, possibly LSU, and clearly we know what Wisconsin can be. Um, so it, it, it they're going to have a, a way to go. I would love to see Auburn against Kansas. If that can happen, I would love to see that. And there it is right there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for tuning in with us tonight. I know we ran a little late. I know we got the shows right behind us in the program, our network. d how can people find you on social media? You guys can find me at Black Dash 813 um, That's definitely why I'll be posting um, a lot of my information, a lot of different things, tweets. Just let you guys know Tom Brady is back. So I will be talking about that for the next like two or three months. <laughs> now it, it makes it hell easy for us to draft, but you guys can find me there. Let me know they can find you at, man. 
Uh, you can find me at Twitter at Spawn4288. That is Spawn4288. Also, please, please do follow uh, the show. Oh, well, hang on, D-Log. I thought I read that wrong. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me look, let me look. Let me look, let me look, let me look. Let me and meanwhile, <laughs> while you checking out our week, the Magic did just take that L, and we got a good matchup between uh, the Hawks right now and the Pacers. The game looked like a blowout earlier, but now it looked like it's getting pretty close. Okay. Hey, never mind, D-Lock. We can, we can uh, dive into this Midwest region, and we'll wait a little bit more. I appreciate that, Taryn, Taryn for the message. Thank you. Now, let's dive in this bit, West region real quick. Where were we on this? Okay. Back to Auburn. Backcourt plays being like crap. I know Bruce Pearl let the guys have free range, but you got to kind of reel that in a little bit if your team wants to succeed. And like I said, if that backcourt is not just enough, then whatever Robbie Smith and Kessler do down low is going to be not a mutant point. Because like I said, USC is a team you don't, I kind of don't want, if, if you're an Arbor, you really don't want to see. Isaiah Mobley, you know, average 14, 8, Eight and a half rebounds this year. One of the taller teams in the country, too. Because after Kessler and Robbie Smith, Auburn do, they don't got that size like that. So that's the thing you really kind of got to watch out for if you're Auburn. Then on top of that, Wisconsin, they played a slow ball. You know, typical Wisconsin ball. LSU. How do you think LSU is going to do in this tournament, D Lock? Um, LSU is, is is one of them teams that, um, boy, one day they one day one day they're playing good, and the next day they, you know, they're out of it. Um, now that they had some they had some pretty decent matchups. Um, against in the tournament, um, I think they they did pretty well. But for me, uh, you know, we talked about, you know, we we said something about Will Wade, um, and for me, I just feel like that could be hope. That could be something that's going to be talked about uh, for a long time. Um, that's going to be something that's going to be over their head. So. I don't think that they play bad. I just think that uh, this Will Wade situation is gonna is gonna be something that's gonna be talked about. It's gonna be big. So uh, for me, um, I think LSU. And let me double check. They got Iowa State that first game. Yep. Um, dude, I don't know if they get. Out of, I don't know if they got. I, I I don't even think they get past Iowa State. Like I just. That whole Will Wade mess just is just it's gonna be a huge distraction. So, um, and then hell, even if they got past Iowa State, they gotta go play Wisconsin. So, uh, for me, not like I said, I thought earlier they would probably you know give Auburn Auburn uh, some some problems, but to go back to the situation, you know, I slipped my mind about Will Wade. So now, uh, the more and more I think about it, uh, LSU might be out quick. Let me, ladies and gentlemen, let me preface saying this. All that stuff with the FBI, wiretapping, all that stuff with these college coaches, all that stuff going on. When that stuff came out to light a few years ago, here's my stance on that, D-Lock. All the head coaches in those programs that got involved with that, like a Bill Self, Bruce Pearl, Sean Miller, Will Wade, you know, whoever else. I can't 
think on top of my head. If your name came up, how don't matter how it was, things come out. Yeah, it should have been gone. Sean Miller, he's out of a job right now. Will Wade, he finally is out of a job. Bill Self, him being at Kef, uh, Kansas has kind of really saved his uh, hide in a sense that he had been fired. Bruce Pearl, I'll say this. I'll be damned if I'm, a, I'm if I'm an assistant coach. I go in a damn prison for a damn basketball coach. I speak about Chuck Person. I'll be damned to go to federal prison for a damn basketball coach. I'll be damned, especially for Bruce Pearl of all people. I ain't going to prison for that. D Lock, do you remember the name Trenton uh, Walford at LSU? You know it. Over there doing his thing in Portland with all the opportunities he's getting. Well, for those that don't know, Mr. Walford was a very talented, high rate player here in the state of Alabama. Prior his last two prep years, junior and senior year, probably arguably the best player in the state. Regardless of class, especially the last last two years. Now, I've always kind of said to myself that if Avery Johnson would said would have been coached still at that point, he probably would have got him to commit. I don't know, maybe. And if some of y'all don't know, Walford, you know, being a state of Alabama, you grew up in Alabama, fam, all that good stuff. You skip, skip, all that stuff. When he committed to LSU, I'm not saying it was a surprise because top players in that in this state have left to go to other places. Look at um, Theo Ratliff. Look at DJ White, for example. When he went to LSU, it's it just like, it's not a surprise, but he went to a rival at that. And a rival that nobody don't like. And a coach that nobody don't like. And this is like, you know, after Nate Holtz got hired and all that stuff, he thought maybe they can keep him in state, but it didn't happen. And then you start hearing the stories about, you know, the money payment, all that stuff. You know, did they pay them, pay them a lot of money to come there? I'm not saying LSU is a bad program to go to. And you shouldn't need a lot of coaxing to go to LSU. Let's be real about that. You're talking about a team that had a, has a pretty good basketball history. From Pete Melvitt, uh, Pistol Pete to Shaquille O'Neal to Glenn Davis and onward. It has a pretty good history there. But you know, for this dude to be to be blatantly D lock of how he operated things. And to get fired, LSU didn't. The people at LSU didn't let him stay for the rest of the year to finish the season. They fired his behind during the SEC tournament of all damn places. Like Stuart Mandel brought a good point up on Twitter. The former LSU AD Joe Avella, you know, brought he brought up the point like he trying to find less miles for for doing what he's doing with the student administrate uh student assistance but he got overruled by boosters and whatnot then you know he's trying to fire will raid for his blatant cheating on to get you know overruled and he eventually got run out 
if that former AD was trying to do the right thing years ago, and L and the people now at LSU trying to cut ties now, they got blood in their hands, D Lock. They have. Yeah, I mean, that's gonna be that, that. There's a lot with that, and we're talking about usually when we hear about LSU, like man, LSU is good at damn near everything. Yes. I, like, am I lying about that? No. <laughs> we got a good football team, good track team, uh, hell, good baseball team. Hell, even hell, the hell, hockey team. And hell, yeah. even and even the women's program getting Kilmoki to come back home. Yes. Like, this is what we. Like, LSU is, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, LSU has everything. Go check out their gymnastic team. Yes. So, they have so much. And to see this with their basketball team, like, it, that's hurt. That hurts, man. I mean, to be honest with you, bro, like, hell, I, I consider LSU just because of who LSU was out of high school. They have a number of guys on every, in every level of every sport, a number of women. So, uh, ben Simmons, I mean, he did go there as well. So they have some guys that came came up out of, you know, came up out of their uni- their university in every sport. So to see this, uh, it's heartbreaking, man. I mean, because we know LSU to be so well at things, and it's gonna be interesting to see how they get this planned out and how they play this. Because now, um, you know, they have to. They put so much effort into making every sport so good or yep. competitive. It's just to see this, like it's like somebody had to drop the ball. You know what I'm saying? Like everything else is good with them. They're good at damn near everything. And for this to happen, it, it just, it's not like LSU is what I'm trying to say. Even Terry, Terry uh, brought up in the chat, D-Log, even the LSU beach volleyball team is good. For some of them, no. And D-Lock yes. to attest to this. Here in the South, if you look at statistics and stuff like that, I'm talking about like housing, health care, education, you know, road conditions, all that type of stuff, you can line them up in whatever order between Alabama... Mississippi, LSU, Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, wherever comp, well, not well, Florida to a degree. South Carolina, you could, wherever you want to do in that order, they, in the, in the United States of America, they last in those categories. But, but like D. Law just said, to their for, for the sports and stuff, for the sports, they damn near gonna break their necks to keep them at the top of the list. We see it at LSU. They told Ed Ogeron, "Yeah, thank you for the championship, but we're gonna get Brian Kelly, or we're well, trying to get Lincoln Ryan, but we settled on Brian Kelly." Hey, Kim Mulkey, come back on down home. Come back down home to Baton Rouge. Will Wade will kind of turn like a blind eye, but if it's too serious, we might have to let you go, and that's what happened. Hell, hell here down in Alabama. If Nick Saban wants more money, they'll shut down Alabama, Alabama schools first to get that man raised. And Nick Same is the top paid uh in state paid employee in the state of Alabama, ladies and gentlemen. That's the point I'm getting at. These schools like D like this said. Alright, we'll wrap it up here. These schools were trying to keep things at top. They'll do damn near anything to keep in at their selves at top. Yeah, and that's my and and that's and that's the thing that I, I 
uh, it's just to see this. Like, like I said, if you go through everything with LSU, they're damn near competitive and very competitive at everything. Just last year, and I know you guys are tired of me talking about track, but just last year, they got they had a guy win the hundred NCAA hundred, and I believe he believe he won the two hundred as well. Their four, their relay four by one hundred relay team is always competitive every year, men and women. A lot of people now, I, I'm pretty sure you've heard this name. A lot of people who've heard this name, they've heard her name so much. You know who Shakara Richardson is? Yep. You know what school she went to? No, don't do not. She went to LSU. <laughs> so LSU is known for having all these com- com- they competitive and everything. Now, granted, a lot of people know Shakar for the situation that happened, but this girl is one. She's under twenty two and one of the fastest women ever. So this is the this is what LSU brings. They bring they have they compete in every level, every sport. So you can't go to uh, LSU and say, oh, well, this is just a track school or this is just a football school. That's not what – they don't do that. So to see this with their bat- for, to see this for their basketball team, they're going to have to fix it. And granted, I think they will, but I, my eyes and my ears are open to see how they fix this because right now um, that's the one thing they're lacking. Now, granted, we're going to see what Brian Kelly looks like at LSU coming up. Hopefully that doesn't take a drop back. But um, either way, because of who LSU is, we're expecting them just to bounce back because of what we know from that, from this this univer this university. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how this 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 play out. And we'll leave it on that note. And as more news come out about Will Wade in that situation there, which is going to be a lot, we'll discuss it here on the show down the line. Uh, do. F- do follow the show on Twitter at Fastbreaker ISR, and do follow uh, the network uh, I Sports Radio on Twitter as well, and on Facebook and Instagram. And also do check out the website iSportsRadio.com. A lot of good things going on right there. And do check out yeah, all the show- definitely follow those. And do do follow the shows on on the network as well. A lot of new shows popping up here uh, here on the network. But tune in, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy yourself this Sunday night. I know we ran a little uh, late, but thank you for tuning in. Yeah, thank we you. definitely had a we, we we had to cover a lot of stuff. So hopefully y'all like the show enough to give us uh, this extra time next next week. But the tournament got a lot of stuff, and then we still got NCAA women that we still got to talk about at some point as well. Yes, sir. So thank y'all for tuning in. Shout out to uh, Mike Pat. Thank you for being patient with us, and we'll talk to y'all next week. 